welcome to Boxing Brothers Online Coaching. We offer customized programming to anybody seeking guidance in their journey to becoming a better boxer. Our programs are personalized to each individual, accommodating for all circumstances and levels of experience. We consider your flaws, goals, injuries, equipment access, and every other major factor of importance when it comes to ongoing boxing development. Our analytical feedback system allows us to provide precise, specific, and productive coaching to anyone, anywhere, offering a unique and extremely tailored coaching service for those looking to get fit, stay fit, and continuously improve their boxing. Take part in our 14-day free trial to see what we're all about and experience tailored online coaching like never before. Hit the link in the description or visit us at boxingbrothersoc.com to better your boxing and join the brotherhood today. Hey guys, Chris and Michael here from Boxing Brothers Online Coaching. Today we're going to touch on how to cash in on the opportunity when your opponent goes back suddenly. Okay, so oftentimes, when you're exchanging with your opponent, you might do something that suddenly makes your opponent go back quite a substantial amount of distance. Okay? And there's two major problems that I see when this takes place. All right? One will be they will do something that makes your opponent go back and stand there. Or the complete opposite. They've done something that makes their opponent go back quite a fair bit and then they rush them way overboard and end up smothering them, getting too close or even walking onto their shots. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you some uh, drills and, and little routines that you can do to help improve your ability to move forward and capitalise on the opportunity of your opponent going back and hopefully ending up against the ropes without getting hit and without overwhelming yourself or losing your balance. So making your opponent go back a, a large distance can happen multiple ways, and this is endless, but we're just gonna touch on a couple of examples, all right? So first example, start with the double jab. That's a really common one, okay? So you might be in front of your opponent, and you're moving, you throw that double jab, and pop, pop, it goes flying back, really pushes them back. That is a great opportunity to take over the center of the ring and to move forward. If your opponent, first and foremost, covers that distance, that large distance, you need to, at the very least, creep forward on them. Okay, you need to take that step forward. So for example, if I'm in front of Michael now, and I've thrown that double jab up, up, I'm gonna at least, at the very least, creep forward towards him. If he's gone back and kind of paused, I'm gonna try to take that front foot. I've used the opportunity, I've, I've created the opportunity by throwing the double jab, he's gone back, I'm gonna creep towards him, and now hopefully keep taking that half step forward and be the person that's pressuring him. Another example may be if your opponent's just finished punching and they want to get out of danger, they feel vulnerable. So for example, you know, Michael's thrown a one-two, and I've got and taken care of it, and I've thrown here and he's gone back, he doesn't want to be there anymore, and he ends up going back quite a lot. What I want to do is chase him down with my body weight in the center, with a high guard and the chin down. Keeping my weight in the center, without punching. Okay, there's no point making your opponent go back, they go back and then trying to punch them as they're going back. The chances of you landing is really low. You wanna cover the distance first with your tight guard, with your hands up, so that you're in a position to defend if they do counter as you're coming forward. Once you get into range, then you can let your shots go. Now in doing this, the next thing you want to be cautious of is walking onto your opponent's punches or rushing onto your opponent's punches. So we've made them go back, we've come forward with a nice tight guard, the chin down, the hands up, we've covered that distance, we've gotten into range to be able to throw our attack. Now we've got to be cautious that having put our opponent under pressure and rushing them towards those ropes that they don't launch something, we ended up walking onto that shot, okay? So another exercise that, you know, concept that you can incorporate into this to exercise your ability to rush forward and, and throw is to have you know your partner going back you rushing forward stopping yeah getting your head off the center so, to evade anything that they may throw and then throw your counter so you've done something to make them go back they've gone back you rush forward you put the brakes on you slip and you throw so that you avoid any kind of um obstacle that they may put in your way to slow you down from rushing them towards those ropes.
Another way you can really catch them off guard and once you've rushed them down, um, cash in on the opportunity is by rushing them down. So we've done the rush down and the attack, we've done the rush down and, and the evasion and the throw. You can also rush forward with the hands up, the tight guard, the chin down, put the brakes on and then angle out a little bit and throw your attack from a different angle. Because as they go back, they're in defensive mode. They're going to go back, make sure they don't get hit. You put those brakes on, you angle out and you throw an attack from a different angle, it's going to be very hard for them to adjust. Thanks for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, subscribe and share with your friends. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, Chris... Go on, say something. Say something. <laughs> what do you want to say? I'm the king of the ring and my punches stink. Ooh.